Welcome back, pet parents. Today's episode is for you. And every episode is for you. I know that. But today's episode is different for you because I have a very special guest. Today's guest is Eliza Burr, and she is a pet business coach. If you haven't heard of a pet business coach, well, today is the day that you are going to learn all about it. And I am willing to bet that you are going to be super interested because all of us pet parents, we are, we're obsessed with our animals. And some of us, well, we're so obsessed with animals, we want to work with them, but we don't know how to get started. So Eliza is here to help talk, talk us through it. What is a pet business coach? How she can help you? How you can actually start? your own business, working with pets and animals. Thank you so much for joining us today, Eliza. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks, Jessica. So we connected recently. I had a chance to chat with you and talk to you about your journey and becoming yeah. a pet business coach because you have been in the pet world. You owned your own business. You've done your own things, um, dog walking, pet sitting, lots of things, working with animals in the past. And now you are helping people learn how to have their own business and work with animals, which is a pretty amazing thing to do. So how did you become a pet business coach? Yeah. So I, as you mentioned, I, I have had my own pet businesses in the past. I I actually graduated with, uh, this is going back a bit, by gra but, but I graduated with a degree in zoology and promptly went into something that had nothing whatsoever to do with animals and was in the corporate world for almost 30 years, at which point I decided that I wanted to do something different. You know, I had enjoyed my career, um, saw, learned a lot of things and saw a lot of new places and people but I was just missing something. I loved animals. I knew I wanted to do something different. I had never been an entrepreneur. I'd never started my own business. So I uh, started doing some research and found that uh, pet sitting and dog walking was a good um, business to start, start as, a, as a new pet business owner. So I um, launched into it and I worked both. I worked the, the pet business as a side hustle for about a year before I left my corporate job and started doing that full time. And I was able to build that business. Uh, this was based in Omaha, Nebraska, to 12 employees and um, hundreds of clients uh, in, in just 18 months. So it grew very rapidly. And during that time, I found that people, other pet business owners were asking me questions and I enjoyed helping them. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. So I realized that that's what I wanted to focus on. So I uh, just at the beginning of last year, I decided I would become a pet business coach full time. Officially, I'd been helping people for many years, but uh, officially I launched the pet business coach and I've been working with pet businesses all over the country ever since. That's incredible. And yours isn't the only story like that, uh, just on this podcast alone. So I have had, um, I worked with a lady when I lived in San Diego who, um, she owned a pet sitting business and it, it grew pretty rapidly just in the time that I was living in San Diego. And I, I hired her people to come mm -hmm. in and take care of my pets. And now she's in like four different states and she has been on the podcast talking about, um, you know, how to choose a pet sitter and things like that, which was mm -hmm. really wonderful advice. Um, I also have had Isabel Alvarez Arada on the podcast who used to own her own pet sitting business in Northern Virginia. And that blew up and grew like crazy. Um, and just for the listeners, um, Alexa, Rabini has also been on the podcast. She's in Vegas, but she um, has a different tale, <laughs> um, <laughs> specifically when it comes to like avoiding certain services like Rover and things like that because of all of mm -hmm. the maybe not so wonderful. They're like Ubers of pet sitting. So <laughs> people like you and April Henley and Il Isabel, like these are professional pet sitters and 
there's a huge difference. There's a big contrast, but just to give some people like an idea to go back and listen to these episodes, because I know I talked about my struggle, especially, um, I mean, I had a hard time initially when I moved to San Diego, but moving from San Diego to Texas, I had a really difficult time finding a pet sitter. So all of that to say, like, this is a really in-demand service industry. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you're here to help people figure out how to do it and, you know, actually make it something that they're not just doing on nights and weekends, like they can actually make a business out of this. I think that is so valuable. So thank you for being here again. (laughs) Yeah, it is. And and you, you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, this is a professional service. And, you know, 20, 30 years ago, people didn't view this as something that other people did for a living. You know, they viewed it more as, as a hobby. And certainly there are some great hobby pet sitters out there, but, you know, the people I work with are, are professionals. They, they own the business. They, you know, they're doing this because they love animals, but they're also doing it because they need to put food on the table and pay the rent. And Rover, you mentioned Rover. A lot of people have a lot of different opinions on Rover, but one thing Rover has done for the industry is publicized uh, the fact that this is a profession and that these people work very hard at what they do. And, you know, they've done a wonderful job of it. So it used to be when I was first running my my business that, you know, I would get strange looks when I told people I was a professional pet sitter and, and <laughs> you know, and, and yeah, what do you really do for a living? And uh, you, you still get a few of those. There's still an educational component to to what we do, but it's definitely getting a little bit better. You know, people are, are definitely learning. Yeah. So, you know, of course, so far we've talked quite a bit about pet sitting, um, mm-hmm. which I think I don't, I don't, in my mind, dog walking kind of comes under the same umbrella, but who knows? Same, Maybe yeah. It's and I different. kind of mean both when I say pet sitting. Um, <laughs> and we can certainly continue to talk about pet sitting, but are there other pet businesses that you coach? I do. I coach all kinds of pet businesses. I had a a client just the other week who has opened up a pet wedding service business. She comes, I thought that was so interesting. She comes in and she takes care of the dog. She brings him when he needs to be there, puts the rings on him or whatever he's going to carry down the aisle, gets him out, exercised, everything you need to do at a wedding with your dog. Um, so, so yeah, I work with all kinds of businesses, but I do uh, tend to focus on pet sitting and dog walking businesses. And part of the reason for that is, especially for new pet business owners, it, it's a very, I, w- I don't want to say easy, but it's an easier business to start and get into because there is, um, you know, not a capital requirement in terms of buying a building. If you're a groomer or renting space, it's really something that you can get into fairly inexpensively and fairly quickly so okay i just have to ask because the first thing that popped into my head when you said dog weddings i <laughs> literally thought like people marrying their dogs together oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then as you were talking i'm like okay i'm crazy she's talking no, about people okay. who want their dogs to be part of their wedding and yeah. she's taking care of these dogs being in exactly yeah <laughs> and and that's happening more and more often a lot of people do want their not just their dogs but their pets in their wedding so um you know there's a lot of logistics around that it's not as as simple as it seems on the surface so it's nice to have a business that does that okay i i'm i'm just wondering if anybody else out there thought what i <laughs> <laughs> well you know i mean, i could be that but no i'm talking about having the dog in the wedding <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. So (laughs) professional pet sitting, dog walking, um, it really, dog weddings, who knows? Maybe you do want to put together dog weddings. I don't know. Um, (laughs) But there is, there's more to it, right? So our, our love of animals is a good start, you know, because the kind of thing that I don't like to see is when people are just like, oh, you know, they're not really pet people and they get into it because it's like to them, easy, quick money, whatever. But for the majority of people, it's that they genuinely have, you know, a passion 
to work with animals. And so my audience, my audience is primarily pet parents. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ideas you can give them um, if they are interested in maybe working with animals in their next life or next career? Because there are so many other things like the actual like steps of setting up a business and understanding how to budget and understanding how to schedule and you know making sure you have plenty of time and the overlap and all that like there is a lot to it there is definitely a lot to it and i'm i'm glad you asked it's you know it's something that people tend to get into because they love animals and that's not a bad reason obviously but to your point, there's, it's a business, it's a small business. So you're wearing a lot of hats, you're doing things that much of the time that are not related to animals that are related to business. So that's the first piece of advice I, I'd give is just make sure you're, you know what you're signing up for in terms of the fact that it's a business, you're running a business um, and you're, you're working with animals, but that business part of it will take up um, a big, big portion of your time. The other thing I'd recommend is, make sure you love doing it. And, and, and what I mean by that is you, you get a lot of people who, um, pet parents, you know, like myself, have had pets their whole life. They love taking care of their own pets and they've done that for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, but they have not done professional pet sitting or dog walking before. And those are two, pardon the pun, pardon the pun, two very different animals. <laughs> you know, doing it professionally is very rewarding. You do get to spend time with animals, but it's also very hard. Um, you know, you're you're dealing with animals you don't know quite as well. You're 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 working with people, not just animals, people on a regular basis. And it it just it isn't so, a lot of people get into it and they find that it just professional pet sitting and dog walking is just not something that they're they're loving. So, you know, I would recommend a couple of routes uh, you can, and I know, again, people have varying opinions on Rover, but Rover does provide a platform for people to try it out, quite honestly, and see how they like it. And even if you just do it for a short amount of time, it does give you a good real life feel for what's involved with running that type of a business. And then the other thing I'd recommend is don't quit your day job. <laughs> if you're if you're working a nine to five, you know, what I did, what I mentioned I did was I, I stayed for a year while I built my business and then I went into it full time. So, um, you know, do it as a side hustle for a while. See how you like it. Uh, pet sitting and dog walking businesses in particular have some flexibility around them. So you can kind of work it around your nine to five or, or another primary job. That's a good idea just to do until you feel like you, you know, really love it and really want to move forward with it. So those are some really good tips because it is something that you most you know, people may not think of initially. It's like all they, fun and games to just, you know, go visit and walk dogs all day. They, they, yeah, they, the they, you're right. They, they don't, it. exactly. They, they don't think about it. And the other thing, uh, you know, I see a lot of beginning businesses tend to do is they become a pet sitter or um, a dog walker for all types of animals because they figure I like all animals. Well, in reality, they may love cats to death and want to spend hours and hours with cats, but um, they're not as keen about working with big dogs, for example. So they start offering, you know, service for, services for all kinds and all sizes and all types of animals. And they don't really love working with some of those types of animals. So they tend to get a little bit disillusioned and stressed out in their jobs. So I would encourage people to think about, you know, I know, I know you love animals. I love animals, but everybody has their preferences and what types of animals they like to work with. And bear that in mind when you're structuring your business and deciding what kind of services to offer. So is that uh, a service that you provide to people it, figuring out what their offer should be and helping them figure out scheduling and really I, what their passion actually is? I do. I do. Absolutely. You know, I, 
I provide everything, you know, soup to nuts. We talk about marketing, hiring, you know, service offerings, pricing, whatever clients need, I, I talk with them about. Um, this does also tend to be an industry where people get burnt out because pet sitters and dog walkers especially are caregivers at heart. So it's difficult for them to say no sometimes. So that does lead to a little bit of burnout uh, in the industry. So I do work with a lot of people on how to set up their businesses so that they um, so that they love them, so that they're not stressed out, so that it works for, for them in their lives as well as their businesses. And as far as like future planning and expectations for the trajectory of uh, where businesses probably should go to actually be able to be, you know, feasible, make people to make a feasible living. Is this something that you see a lot of people are just getting in because they want to be pet sitters or do people understand or do you have to coach them through to um, understand that it, it's probably going to take them in a path where they're managing pet sitters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, definitely. Um, and that's actually another thing I would recommend is when you're first setting up a business, think about, um, think about the, the immediate, ob immediate, obviously, but also think long-term. Do you want to be a solopreneur? For example, just just you going out and doing pet sitting visits and running the business, or do you want to eventually hire employees or independent contractors? Because at that point, you know, as you said, you're you're managing people, you're managing other um, other pet uh, caregivers. So, um, which which is a whole other thing. And some people just and that's fine. Some people are just not wanting to sign up for that. So there are a lot of solopreneurs out there, but in order to scale the business. Obviously, you only have so many hours in the day, so you will work a lot of hours and a lot of days and very rarely have time off if you are a solopreneur. But, um, the, you know, the trade off you get is you won't be having to worry about managing people. So there's um, there's pluses and minuses on both sides, definitely. And that's something that you can help coach people through to Absolutely. kind of understand where. Where they want yep. to go with it. Yeah, I talked to a lot of pet business owners who are right at the cusp of their businesses growing rapidly and they are doing all the visits and, and caregiving themselves and they're exhausted, quite honestly. So they're they're on the verge of wanting to hire and help. Uh, and I help them through that transition and, and switching over. Awesome. So there are, we'll talk in just a minute about where people can find out more and if, if there are some resources available to them. Um, but I would like to ask you really quickly, um, just because I think you have a good understanding and can help people. And since my audience is primarily pet parents, um, what suggestions do you have for, well, anyone, but the pet parent listening who want to support small pet businesses? Because there is a big difference in, you know, big business and small business. And yeah. how, how, do you, how can you kind of help people navigate supporting that? That is a, I'm so glad you asked that uh, because I, I think so many pet business owners out there are not as supported as they should be. Um, you know, two things. I, I, very much encourage pet parents to remember that the the pet caregiver that you're hiring is a professional. So uh, much like you wouldn't argue with your plumber for the prices he's charging you <laughs> for his services, you don't really argue or haggle with your pet sitter for the price of their services as well. Um, you know that's that's just part of, of of keeping 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 in mind that they are a professional and you know honestly um they're not out to to uh they're not out to make a million dollars they're doing it because they love animals so the, so bear that in mind the other thing i would uh definitely recommend is spread the word 
you know, I know when I'm looking for sitters, if I move to a new place and I'm looking for sitters for my own furry family, I'm asking everybody I can find, who's your pet sitter? What do you think of them? Definitely, if you like, if you find someone, if you love them, you know, tell other people about them, leave reviews, just, just spread the word because we, um, pet business owners tend to be smaller in, by nature. There's not a lot of big ones out there. So those small businesses really do thrive on word of mouth and um, feedback and reviews. Awesome. Yeah. It, you know, that's a, a big theme on this show is supporting small businesses. And yeah. I also like bonus points if it's a woman owned business, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. Um, which, which is think- great because, you know, 90, gosh, probably more than 90% of pet businesses out there are women owned. Right. And, yeah. and to be able to know that and have that connection with a, the connection you get with a small business is yeah. vastly different from the connection you get from, you know, big, big business or, um, you know, these conglomerate owned places that, so that a lot true. of yeah. currently. Um, but yeah, I think some of the, the, if, if you don't mind, uh, some of the, the, talking points that you have had throughout uh, today's episode kind of make me think, one, if this is something that you might be interested in, if you do think that you would like to start your own small business centered around animals in some way, shape, or form, um, first of all, you know, obviously, if, if you know, El- Eliza is here to, to help you with that, but especially with some of those tips you gave for supporting small business, I think that's kind of um, a gauge for like how, how you feel about small business to begin with and how you're going to be able to like understand running a small business is kind of in that, that field of how you handle it and how you deal with it anyway. And that, you know, the temperament that people have, the character Mm -hmm. that people have um, that can actually, in my mind, be like a really good starting point with, should I do this? Should I not do that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I agree with you 100%. That's a good observation. So uh, thank you so much, by the way, for bringing this information to my audience, because I'm sure there are some pet parents out there who would really like to spend more time working with animals, maybe um, create their own path in life to be more self-sufficient and figure out how to, how to do this like entrepreneur thing, but they just have no idea where to start. So do you have resources on your website? How can people follow up with you and find out more? Yeah, absolutely. I um, have a website, obviously. My, the website is uh, thepetbusinesscoach.dog. Uh, you can find out everything about me and the services I offer there. Uh, or I, I do also offer a free 20-minute consultation to anybody who would like to kind of explore whether or not uh, opening a pet business is a good move for them. And you can uh, find that at tpbc.dog, stands for the Pet Business Coach, TP bc.dog. And the other thing I'd encourage folks to do is there are there are a couple of large uh, pet care organizations uh, nationally. One is NAPS, the National Association for Professional Pet Sitters. And the other one is PSI, Professional, um, pardon me, Pet Sitters International. And those are, you can Google those. Those are good great organizations to learn a little bit more about the industry, what being a a pet care professional means, and just get a better feel for whether it's a a good thing for you to do. Those are excellent resources. Thank you so much, Eliza. And I will make sure that those um, links that you just talked about are in the show notes for people to find out more. Uh, Is there anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to say? No, just, you know, I... I know what it feels like to be in a nine to five for a long time that you just don't want to be in anymore. And a lot of people think, you know, supporting yourself, having a a business, taking care of animals every day is out of reach, but it really isn't. It's been a tremendous journey for me and 
I love helping make that happen for others as well. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for being here and talking to my audience, Eliza. And please make sure to check the show notes. Visit the pet business coach dot dog to yes. find out more. <laughs> as well as was it T P B C dot dog? Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. B C dot dog to book a free 20 minute consultation with Eliza. Um, if you are interested in making a career out of working with animals, thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos in my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. <laughs>